Hello, I'm speaking with Anthony Samsel, scientist from Deerfield, USA, and he has some important information to pass to us regarding glyphosate. Hello, Anthony, how are you? Uh, good morning, Tony. I'm doing fine. And, and yourself, how are things up in Canada? <laughs> I'm doing fine. So go ahead. Do you, what do you have for us today? Uh, well, uh, we're going to cover three, uh, three topics in three separate videos. Um, uh, the first one uh, is concerning uh, my research uh, into glyphosate in getting into proteins uh, and, and uh, disturbing and disrupting proteins. Um, I've been studying uh, horses and uh, glyphosate uh, administered in the feed um, and following it into the tissues of the horses. Uh, there's been a problem with, um, with uh, uh, many horses uh, coming down with uh, hoof problems. The keratin uh, that uh, is the major uh, protein of construction of the hoof is defective. And as a result, um, the animal's hooves collapse. The, the protein isn't supporting the weight of the animals. Uh, so I uh, suspected that possibly glyphosate uh, was the cause of this. And so I wanted to investigate um, horses that had this problem uh, to see if glyphosate was, in fact, uh, getting into those structural proteins. And uh, I was successful um, in evaluating a number of horses what I found was that their feed was contaminated. The, uh, the grain that they were being fed was contaminated. Um, and it was uh, contaminating virtually all the tissues of the animal. Uh, we know from Monsanto's studies uh, that when uh, you uh, receive glyphosate in the diet, that glyphosate will be found in all tissues of your biology. There are no tissues that are excluded. Um, and... Um, the, t the tissues of the horse uh, that I examined uh, not only included the, carat the keratin, defective keratin of the hooves, but also their blood. Um, I also looked at um, uh, the urine. I looked at their feces. So I followed glyphosate uh, in the diet and I examined these, uh, these tissues. And what I found was, um, uh, of course, the... Um, the horse was excreting glyphosate from a, from a steady diet um, uh, of glyphosate administered in the feed. The, uh, the manure uh, contained in excess of 400 parts per billion, which um, uh, was similar to the uh, chows that they were being fed. Those chows were contaminated with, uh, with greater than 400 parts per billion. Um, their urine, uh, they, they were excreting glyphosate. Uh, about 6.61 parts per billion um, daily uh, in the urine. Um, then I examined uh, their blood. Their blood was also contaminated. Uh, it had uh, about um, uh, almost three-tenths of a part per billion of glyphosate circulating continuously in the blood. So we know that once glyphosate is in the blood, that it circulates to all tissues uh, throughout the animal. Uh, that includes us. Um, the defective hooves uh, contained um, 52.4 parts per billion uh, of glyphosate as part of the keratin protein. And that was in their defective hooves. Um, I did the uh, spiked recovery of all samples uh, to make sure that, uh, that I was getting uh, good results. And um, uh, I, I got between, um, uh, uh, with the urine, I got uh, recoveries of 103%. Uh, percent. With the uh, horse's hooves, I've got a recovery of 112%. So um, spiking the samples with glyphosate, um, and then examining the, the recovery showed that uh, I was getting good readings. So we know that glyphosate is getting into keratin, the de defective proteins uh, of the horse's hooves. Um, so from there, I decided that I'd start looking at people. And um, I, I've contacted uh, uh, some uh, patients that 
I know that have scleroderma. Scleroderma is a uh, it's a disease of uh, of the of the collagen, um, a disease of uh, our proteins of construction. Your glands, your organs um, uh, uh, become sclerotic. You lose tissue. Uh, you lose function, um, and it leads to all kinds of uh, disease consequences. So. Um, uh, there's one particular patient that uh, that I've looked at, uh, and I noticed the fingernails um, were. Uh, um, as a matter of fact, I'll send you some pictures of the fingernails of, of this particular patient. Uh, the the fingernails and hair are mainly composed of the protein keratin, similar to the horse's hooves that I examined. So um, I asked for samples of uh, keratin uh, from the fingernails uh, so that I could analyze them to see if there was, in fact, glyphosate in the defective fingernails of uh, these particular patients. And what I found was that, yes, glyphosate from the diet uh, is getting into hair and fingernails. And the results uh, for this one particular patient uh, was 15 parts per billion of uh, glyphosate from his diet uh, being excreted as part of the carotene protein. So we know that um, uh, if you're eating a, a diet, uh, the Western diet that's contaminated with glyphosate, that you will be excreting uh, um, glyphosate as part of all your tissues, all your proteins will be uh, uh, integrated with glyphosate. And um, I'm, uh, I'm about to, uh, to start analyzing more uh, keratin proteins in the lab. And all this information will be included in a new paper uh, that we'll put out sometime in 2018 that will uh, show how glyphosate uh, travels, lines up in our proteins of construction, and uh, possibly causes defective proteins as uh, seen in the horses and also seen in in the fingernails of uh, patients with scleroderma. So that's that project, Tony. Okay, that's fantastic. I have a last question before we stop this. Uh, about the hooves, uh, since it has to support the weight of the animal, unlike a hair or fingernails, uh, how, does, how does glyphosate in place of glycine in, in the keratin proteins uh, affect the structural strength of the hoof? Is it more it brittle or is it just separate? It's, what, what, what happens? Um, because uh, uh, glyphosate is a, is a phosphonate, a methyl phosphonate compound of, of glycine, mm -hmm. um, it, creates, uh, um, it creates proteins that are... Uh, Subject to uh, to being br more brittle, more brittle. So that more, is how the hooves actually crack. Less less or, flexible because of that phosphonate backbone. So what actually happens to the horses is their hooves begin to crack. They begin to crack and flake, and oh. uh, they, they're they're not as pliable as uh, as hooves that just have. Uh, uh, regular glycine as ah. part of the protein. Ah, okay. now, now, as to we uh, whether or not gly glyphosate becomes part of the protein chain itself or whether it integrates um, as a ligand in the triple strand of the protein um, still has to be determined. But oh, it's I in see. there. We know it's in there. Oh, I and, see. Uh, and it took 24-hour uh, digestion uh, of the keratin protein to get glyphosate out into uh, water-based solution for analysis. So um, uh, it's there. And, uh, and the same thing with uh, people eating a, a diet that's contaminated with glyphosate. They'll be, uh, uh, you, you'll be able to find it in their fingernails. I well. understand. Now, unlike humans where the fingernail is continuously growing and you don't have the same, uh, same uh, molecules that you had uh, three years ago in your finger or hair, a horse's hoof also continuously replaces its uh, molecules, I suppose. Otherwise, it should have the same thing it had five years yes. ago, irrespective of whatever it ate after that. 
Yes, horses' hooves are continually growing like your fingernails. Oh. There's uh, constantly keratin being manufactured and secreted. Oh, wonder, fantastic. Uh, there's so, so many things we learn by talk, just talking to you. So, thank you so much. So, that goes to show that glyphosate is an extremely dangerous uh, molecule to be in our biology in, in, in a hundred different ways, including this one. So, that's item one. What is item two?